What is up, everybody? Welcome to the 438th Best Poker Channel on YouTube. Don't tell me he's just going to call. What in the... What he just the... F C. I've had so many people reach out to me saying, Veronica, this cheating scandal is crazy. It's like drinking water from a fire hose or a fire hydrant or something that's spraying a lot of water on their face. Anyway, uh, so I said, yeah, sure. Let me find two of like the most obvious hands and then later on go and watch Joey Ingram's videos. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. Uh, yeah. So I did commentary for many years. I'm a recreational poker player, but there are a couple of hands in one episode that I thought were so obvious. And I think anyone with even limited poker knowledge would be able to see how obvious it is that Mike Postle is cheating. So let's get to the hands. Our story begins today, children, on November 21st, 2018. Mike Postle's day of Christmas. Um, the two commentary duo in the booth, let's just be aware that Casey Mills is a professional poker player. She knows what she's talking about. And Master C has been playing poker for a long time, although a recreational player, still very competent, still knew what he was seeing was very odd. Let's look at their reactions. Then yeah, they would have paid him off. And we have the chat already going crazy. We got over on the YouTube side, Russ McKinley, uh, or McKinley, Kevin Smith, my friend says. Let's pause for one second. Although it was 2018, we still were all on our phones. But, and I played in this game too, we all had our phones on the railing in front of us where we didn't have to hide anything. Mike spent so much of his time staring at his crotch at the phone in his crotch. Why? It's his first time here. Oh, Welcome. Man. Jose C. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that. Uh, Cody Moose, guy before. Justin Caritas, and over on the Twitch side, it was, uh, I, I was talking college. to a lot of people in Rick and Barstow, and I hate college, in Aspen Powers. Oh, What's yes. up? Austin Powers? Austin Powers. Yeah, C. Mill. Oh, yeah, I think I may have mentioned him also in the game. Yes, hello. Good to see everybody. I'm wishing, hoping for everyone to have an amazing Thanksgiving. Right now, we have Brian set a, or pocket tens. Mike P's got the pocket. Oh, I didn't. How did I not say Mike P's yes. in this game? You guys, Mike P's in this game. Hello. It's going to be a good game. You're not going to want to miss it. And, uh, oh, Justin wanted to let me know that Yahoff's name is said Yahoff. Okay, like it sweet. sounds that I thought the Y might be silent. Come on, give me a break. Uh, but the board did pair on the flop, two nines and a four runs out ten eight. So oh my, yeah. Look at this wow. run out. Both wow. have boats. This is the sickest run out. Yeah. We could ever imagine. Pot is and currently at three seventy. <laughs> Mike P checks because he feels like Brian is a most likely to fire when he does, and so we're gonna get a check. I've never seen anyone so miserable from making a boat on the river. Literally, we're all losing money here. Without getting overly technical, if you're going to set yourself up for a check raise, which is literally the only option you're going to do with a boat on the river, with a very strong hand on the river, unfortunately, boat versus boat, you're always going to lose money here. But if you are going to set up a check raise, it's the only thing you're doing is a check raise. You're not check calling ever, ever a boat on the river, ever. Unless it's your first time playing and it's your grandmother sitting across from you and you don't want to take her money. But if you're Mike Postle, you know what the fuck is going on. And you never check call. It's not a thing. Not in this spot. You know when you check call? You check call if you know what your opponent yeah, has. You know, I think we're just going to get stacks in here, uh, you know, because they're not exactly deep at this point, being it's so early in the game. Looks like Mike has a little, about 800 left. So I think at this point he's just going to ship, get it in. Obviously we see Brian's going to snap call. And what are you going to do is just, you know, set over set. Oh, 
Don't tell me he's just going to call. What in the... What he just the fuck? See. Wow. What I'm trying to figure out what would make him just call there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless he he's a mutant. He's a mutant. That guy's that's what it is. I mean, honestly, he's been playing for the last like month at a level that's I mean, he's always a very good player, right? We all know this. But he's playing at like an extra high level over this last like month and a half, two months. It's just been kinda crazy. Just super setup spots where you just think it's just kinda standard and even not even like kind of a good place still to get like to lose it all, especially like at this stack him. depth. I just want to ask him, yeah. like, and then to what? like not lose it. Holy crap! I don't know. I'm I'm still like I'm kind of speechless. Yeah, same here. Uh, that that just happened like that, and very interesting to me. Okay. Everyone in the chat, including commentary, knows this hand was egregious. And everyone starts talking about it. In the booth, they can't stop talking about it. And then someone slides into the chat to help save the so day. So Rita Tell is asking, you know, why call the river if he knows he's beat? We're assuming that you're talking about the, uh, the full house over full house. I don't know that he knows he's beat. I just think he probably oh. thinks there's a, a chance that he's beat, but also thinks that... Brian just, would not be calling a raise there. Justin you know. just said he didn't have 8-8. Eight, eight. He had 7-8, and that was the reason why. Oh, okay. So that, like, because I was starting to be like, what is, is this game still sound? Like, it, right. it almost felt like, like he knows something he shouldn't know in that spot, you know? But it makes all the sense now. We do for occasionally have some graphic errors. It looks like his cards were misread on the reader. He had 7-8, eight, not 8-8, eight, eight, making it much easier to get away there or to just call. Right, okay. That, that makes definitely a, makes sense. Then. Makes a lot more sense. But like I said, yeah. I was just kind of also kind of thinking, you know, unless he thought that Brian was going to be the type of player that isn't going to really call worse, then you, you're just kind of throwing away money at that point. You know, but that's even pretty thin. Like, and they, you know, that's kind of thing that you would have to have super deep, like, intimate knowledge of each other's games and all that kind of history to not be able to re-raise a right. full house if that was it. Justin said that it was an RFID error. And you know what? Those things did happen. When I was doing commentary, we had RFID errors. But one thing I did notice when I was doing commentary was if a 9 was registering as an 8, it would misread every single hand until we recalibrated the cards on the table. There were times where we had to delay starting the live feed or stop the live feed and recalibrate the hands because they were misreading. So they wouldn't just misread once. The only time you can have a card accidentally misread once is in seat one or seat nine, it would happen where the dealer would pitch a card to like seat eight, but it would like go over seat nine's reader. And then you'd have like a misread, but Mike wasn't sitting in one of those hands or, or in one of those seats. Mike was sitting in a really good seat. And so the misreading just happening on his cards all the time is really odd to me, but hey, you never know. It might have been misread. I've made some crazy plays in my game, like folding a boat to Bart Hansen in a bomb pot in a really weird situation. Alicia has made some crazy plays in my game. She won like over 19,000 on her birthday in my game, but I've never had Justin, JFK in the chat, be concerned about my plays or come up to me and ask me about them. I've never seen him come up to Alicia and ask her, what's going on? You made a big play. Literally, Justin was never concerned about anyone else's hands except for Mike's, which I find to be a little odd. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I remember hearing from Justin the exact number that Mike like cashed out or how much Mike was up. And that seemed bizarre. I mean, there was no chance that Mike knew like the exact number that I cashed out or that, that Adam cashed out or whoever, but he knew right. like exact number that Mike cashed out that, you know, that's unusual. <laughs> yeah. So one thing, I think this might be uh, Porter's first time back. Yeah. So we, 
were able to find Porter. He went missing, but it turns <laughs> out he was just hiding behind his beard. So <laughs> he's just been around the whole time. And look at this. We have a couple people calling the $10 and Mike with aces raising to 60 Wouldn't it be so annoying if you or me could see the cards, but the person on our left is such a luck sack that even though we can see the cards, they keep beating us. It would be so annoying. Like my face would just show my annoyance with the situation. I would be so Brian pissed. with Queen Jack of Hearts right behind him calls. And this should bring in at least C-Mill with the pocket eights. And, and Harlan with the old strong Queen Nine offsuit. Yeah, Brian's going to be in there with the Queen Jack as well. And Porter's going to come along closing the action with the eight six of clubs. I'm okay Mike with... Mike, he's just like, somebody, three yeah. bet, three bet, three I bet, know. somebody. And I'm kind of liking Porter's hand right now in this situation. Yeah. Interesting. Seven uh, for Porter would give him a straight as well as he's got the, the backdoor club draw. And Brian just binks the oh straight. Oh, my God. Look at Brian. Wow. I'm going to change my, my previous statement. I like... Brian's hand a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flopping the whole world. And, and you know, against when you've got aces and you just hate going five way to the flop because it really does lower uh, your equity so significantly. And now this board comes out super coordinated. Oh, my God, the pain. Oh, my God. And baby Jesus, the pain. I can't stand it anymore. Mike P. does continue his bet. He bets out 180. And Brian with the nuts, does he call or does he raise here? I think he's just called. He's going to make a call. And Mike is not liking his hand, especially because he has the ace of spades in his hand. It's going to decrease a lot of the draws that Brian has. So Brian's going to be very, you know, like value heavy at this point or made hand heavy at this point. And it's not to say that Brian necessarily always has him beat here, but he's going to at least have you know a lot of two pair in his range, and then obviously we you know straights and that. I think Mike. I don't know. You can still make a case for betting for sure because there's still enough like say, king jack, king queen kind of hands that Brian's going to have. Mike's going to continue to bet out here. I mean, size is down a little bit, you know, or at least the same size. You would expect him to bet larger, so it seems a little bit more of a kind of a pot control line. You know, he's deciding here, you know, if he's going to get value, he's going to be kind of thin value at this point, and, you know, like just targeting a king type of a hand. And then yeah, it's a double flush draw board now right. at this point. I think that Brian needs to go ahead and put in the raise and really charge those draws, not give him a good price to continue to draw. However, again, I think at this point it's hard to put um, Mike on a draw here the way the action went down just because, I mean, yeah. he could have something like uh, it just because he was our original raiser pre, he bet the flop. He's now let out on the turn, and so it, it definitely feels more like a made type of hand. But And Brian does go ahead and put in the raise. Let's see what sizing he chose. Pot was 865. Let's see what sizing he went for here. It looks like 600, right? Maybe 625? 575? No. Yeah. I thought it was a whole stack of green plus some green on top. Raises a 575. It's 390 to call. Yeah, and Mike P knows he's beat. He just throws it away. 600. Either way. 